welcome to City Point Church online live stream. We're so glad that you could join us today. Happy New Year, and with this new year, we have some exciting things coming up. One of those things is starting this week, we're gonna be observing communion during our service, one of the two sacraments that the Lord gave us. But before we get into all that, we're gonna worship together, so turn up your volume and let's sing.
together. Starting this new year, communion is important to us here at City Point, celebrating the gift that Christ gave us and not just celebrating it, but incorporating it into our life uh, every week. You really should be doing that at every meal. And speaking of that, communion is just a time for us to commune together. So if you if you have never taken communion before, normally it's a cracker and a cup of juice or wine. Um, But it really could be anything. It's just something for us to do together. And as Paul said, do it proclaiming Christ's resurrection until the day that he returns. So during this next moment, if you have the implements ready, you can go ahead and partake in that. And if not, just be looking forward to next week 
where we as a church commune together, but being Sunday morning, probably hundreds of millions, if not billions of people worldwide, all celebrating Christ's gift. Speaking of the new year, we're also starting another exciting thing, a watch party. January 23rd at our Quant building, you can be part of our live recording audience. We're gonna have our 1015 live stream just like usual, but the building will open up at 945. There'll be seating, there'll be uh, coffee, time for visiting, and then just a few minutes before 1015, we'll start a countdown and you can be there for, um, for the live stream of the sermon. It's gonna be a really good time together. At this time, childcare is not provided, um, so kind of make plans accordingly. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook so you can get reminded of this kind of information. Subscribe uh, on YouTube and ring the bell so that you get our weekly content. And um, while you're taking care of all that, I just wanna know, with this being the new year, what was the first way that you made money? Let's get into it. Happy New Year. You know, I was thinking that the message of Christmas, in a way, kind of primes the pump for the new year. The birth speaks of something new, a brand new start, something to follow, something is to come. I had a grandson born on Thanksgiving Day, and with every day that has passed, we've noticed one change above everything else. He's growing. <laughs> It's the natural, intended, purposeful consequence of birth. Growth. Charles Spurgeon explains, Christ is not glorified because he was born in a manger, but because he's born in a broken heart. The Christmas birth, among many things, points us to the potential of the new year's growth. Christ willingly submitted to a birth as a baby in a manger in order to become a Lord born in each of our hearts. Few things on earth are as sad as a stillborn baby. And maybe the saddest of all is a Christianity that never finds its way out of the manger, that never leaves the manger. An annual observance of the manger birth of Jesus with no growth as he is our king, the king of our hearts. You see, Christmas really can prime the pump for the new year's growth. And as we begin this new year, 2022, we mustn't overlook the obvious. But first, three stories. Two good old boys bought two horses during the summer, but when winter came, they found it too expensive to keep boarding them. So they turned the horses loose in a pasture where they had plenty to eat. And one old boy said to the other, how are we going to tell your horse from mine when we pick him up after winter? And the other answered, oh, that's easy. We'll, we'll just cut the mane of my horse and cut the tail of your horse. So they did. The problem was when they picked up the horses next spring, well, both the mane and the tail had grown back to normal length. So the first guy asked, well, now what are we going to do? And the second guy said, well, why don't you take the black one and I'll take the white one? <laughs> Surely no one would overlook anything that obvious, right? Second story. A knight and his men returned to the castle after a long day of fighting. They came before the king and the king said, how did we fare today? 
And the knight responded, Sire, we have been robbing and pillaging on your behalf all day, burning the towns of your enemies in the West. And the king shrieked, What? I don't have any enemies in the West. And the knight sheepishly answered, Well, you do now. Story number three. When Navarez, the Spanish patriot, lay dying, his priest stood over him and asked him if he had forgiven all of his enemies. And Navarez looked astonished and said, Father, I have no enemies. I've shot them all. As we head into this new year, are we overlooking the obvious with regard to loving as Christ loved and serving as Christ served our mission? Loving and serving should be as obvious as the difference between a black horse and a white horse. <laughs> loving and serving is obviously not about making new enemies or about shooting your old ones. Jesus' love and service to others was never partial. His treatment of others never fell under the influence of any social norm. He erected no walls because of religious or political differences. He met with and loved Simon the Pharisee, Matthew the tax collector, Nicodemus the Sanhedrin member, fishermen, Roman officials, prostitutes, the wealthy, the educated, the poor, the outcast, Jesus refused to separate himself from anyone who would come to him. Let me read you something he said. This is how I want you to conduct yourself in these matters. If you enter your place of worship and about to make an offering, you suddenly remember a grudge a friend has against you, abandon your offering, leave immediately, go to this friend and make things right. Then and only then come back and work things out with God. Or... Say you're out on the street and an old enemy accosts you. Don't lose a minute. Make the first move. Make things right with him. Did you catch that? If you know someone has something against you, you go to them and try to make things right. Or if you have something against someone, you go to them and try to make things right. It doesn't matter who has done wrong to whom. Each one should take the initiative to make things right. Y'all look, since loving God and loving others are the greatest commands, could this be an area we should make sure and not overlook going in to 2022? If God loves and serves me not because of who I am, but because of who he is, shouldn't that be our aim for this year? Treating others right because of whose we are, because of who it is that is inside of us, not because of who they are or what they've done or said. Back in 2005, an army medic named Stephen Scheider was patrolling the dangerous streets of Baghdad. And that's when an enemy sniper shot him in the chest. Stephen's bulletproof vest saved him, even though he was knocked to the ground by the impact. Stephen then accompanied the combat team that tracked down that sniper. When they found him, the sniper was wounded and in need of prompt medical attention. Are you getting the picture of this? Only moments earlier, this sniper had put Stephen's heart between the crosshairs of his scope of his rifle, had pulled the trigger fully intending to end his life. Now, Stephen was kneeling next to his enemy and dressing the wounds of the man who had just tried to kill him. It doesn't make earthly sense. But we're not following an earthly king. We're following the king of kings. And his kingdom is not bound to this earth. Let's start this new year refusing to overlook the obvious command of our King to love and serve one another. In 2022, love and service win. I could chase after greatness First of all on my knees Leave 
song is truth. Excited to go through this year together. As Christ followers, love and service are not an option. So this week, love and serve well. Carry on. Have a great one. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. As you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath. The planets form. If the stars. 
Could amount to 